We're here at Annapolis Lee Airport with Pete Mursky and his Gobosh 700. We're going to do a pre-flight and talk about an engine start in this light sport aircraft. Hi. Pete? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy our flaps. We have split flaps here. You can see underneath the wing that kind of come down and, and drop down. Um, I like to start on this side of the plane, kind of work my way around. Uh, we have several hinges, which is probably a little difficult to see, but there's some hinge pins in there. I like to check, just make sure everything feels nice and tight. These are all metal? Yep, yep, it's all metal construction. Uh, I like to take my, uh, my ailerons and just test them, make sure everything's free and clear. See our stick moving inside there. Okay. Um, also, I like to just check my, uh, my hinge pins here, make sure everything's in. Of course, do an overall visual of the wing too. Make sure everything is uh, just shaped up and ran into it while I was going away, or wind or something. They put a little bit of strain on or birds and whatnot. And then what I like to do is come around the back side of the tail, just check all my antennas, make sure that they're in good shape. Just check the overall condition, make sure I don't have any dings or dents or something that I may have missed before. Uh, one nice thing about the, the GoBosch too is they have inspection points all throughout the plane for when you're doing your annual inspection. You have these little doors that you can get in, very easy access. Very, You can do a, also a visual check yourself as you go through. While I'm back here, I just like to untie our tail. And we'll come back and check all our control surfaces. Check our elevator here. Make sure we're uh, my stick deflection. I think it seems to be working pretty good. Check my uh, my trim tab here. Make sure it's, everything's connected with my hinges. This is all manual trim. Yes. Yep. All manual. It's right there in the center of the cockpit. You just adjust the wheel down. I uh, like checking the, the rudder too, making sure it, it hits against the stops. It has these metal stops here that only allow it to deflect so far. Check all my linkage. Linkage on both sides check my antenna and make sure my linkage is good here check my elevator Everything seems to be good sure I don't see any signs of oil or anything underneath there that's not supposed to be. Come back around and check our split flaps again. This side they're looking pretty good. Check our overall condition of the wing. Get our aileron. Make sure it's moving fine. Get over here. It looks good on our winglet and check our lights. Untie our starboard wing. Way here. All right, we get around here. I like to definitely take a look at the leading edge of the wing, make sure there's no dings or dents or anything that looks out of the ordinary. So, no fuel tanks in the wings? No, no, we just got a center one. Um, and I also like to take a look at the, uh, the condition of the tire, do a, a visual inspection just to make sure it's uh, not low in air, um, you know, just make sure visually it looks good. And then it has the uh, what you get, it's 36 psi. Uh, between 33 and 36 right on there so if you have any question you can just look right there metal leaf spring uh, gear yes okay and then we have one drain here for our fuel just one yep just one and you can see me there you can take a fuel sample make sure if we got anything in there just have to now you can burn 100 low lead and auto and no gas in there. Yep, you can burn a higher octane um, auto fuel in there too. Um, it's just the you know finding it is going to be the trick to it. You know if you're of course with a light sport we only take so many. We're at 18 and a half gallons. 18.5 gallons. Yeah, 18.5 gallons. So you can actually bring it in in cans if you want to, but most places you're going to fly are going to have 100 low lead. And as you said before, your fuel tank is up. Yep, it's right here in the center. And you close the canopy to Yep, and I can do that and show you. And you actually have a dipstick in here as well, so you can pull it out and do your visual check, which it's, you can tell it's topped off there. Okay. Which is nice. Rotax 912 engine, 100 horsepower, right? Yep. 
correct. Yeah, Liquid cooled. Years. Yes. And we'll go take a look at the antifreeze reservoir. Back up. Yeah. All right, and we'll take a look at, get into our one inspection point for the engine here. Okay, so this is our Rotax 912. Very clean, very quiet, very efficient engine. Uh, for your checking your oil here, what you do is you take off your inspection cap here and you have your dipstick. Now, you have to burp the Rotax engine because all the, the oil is not back into the reservoir yet. So you're actually taking your cap off. Set that aside. I'll let that down. And then you actually do counterclockwise rotation. Of course, you make sure your fuel's off. Make sure the keys are not in ignition when you're doing it. Not that you would start it because of the compression ratio. I, I wouldn't take a chance. <laughs> That's a uh, three to one gear ratio? Um, I believe so. I'd have to confirm that. So you hear that, the burp of the rear tax. And then you take in, and it's on the stick. So we're in good shape there. Three points. You have to check the uh, the coolant fluid as well. Yes. Yep. We'll get around to that on the other side. Now, also, I like to kind of do a visual inspection, just make sure I don't see any uh, liquids or fluids or anything that or something that doesn't look out of the ordinary. You know, if you see any of the linkage loose and whatnot, and then uh, when we get around the other side, we can you can reach up and check on your alternator okay. belt as well. So. Three blade composite prop. Yep. Okay. Uh, so your landing lights are LED as well, right? Yes. Yep. LED lights. Um, steerable nose gear. You can see it's a, oh, it's a caster here. I'm sorry. Nose gear. Um, it, uh, we pulled right into the spot and actually spun right around on its own. You didn't even have to push it back. It's nice. All right. So we have an external power point too if we need to plug in. We're a little low on juice there. Get into our other inspection. Okay, now we can check our uh, our antifreeze right in here because it's a liquid cooled. We can check our brake fluid back there. Uh, again, you want to check, make sure you don't have any leaks or, or anything looking out of the ordinary. Make sure all the wire, everything just looks right. Something's hanging loose, and that's definitely not a good sign. And then you can actually reach in here, and you can feel the belt. Just make sure you got tension on it. You can't see it so much, but you can definitely feel it. So, all right. All right, so again, we usually check out everything here. The, the, the wheel, the leading edge of the wing. We check our pitot tube here and our static source. Here's our stall warning here. Come around, again, check our lights. Make sure everything's secured, fastened much takes care of our external pre-flight and kind of take a look a little bit on the inside. Um, all right, this is the, uh, the cockpit of the, the 700 model. Um, this one has been, this originally came with the uh, standard six pack, but it was actually upgraded to the Dyna and Skyview system which is new for this one. Climb up in here. Flip on our battery so we can get our lights to everything to come on. A minute or two to power up. Uh, now this particular plane has the 496 which you can get it in the 590 or the 495 or the 496. Um, I opted to get the 496 because it does have the weather, um, the XM weather, and I do have the subscription for that, which 